Five minute medicine series, acute decompensated heart failure. Acute decompensated heart failure is the development of dyspnea associated with the rapid accumulation of fluid within the lungs interstitial and alveolar spaces due to acutely elevated cardiac filling pressures. Symptoms. Is your patient short of breath at rest or during exercise? Is this an ac of acute onset or progressive? What are their exercise limitations? Do they have orthopnea or paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea? Has there been any weight gain, edema, increasing abdominal girth, somnolence, or diminished mental acuity? Precipitants of heart failure. Failure. Forget to take medications, arrhythmia, anemia, infection, ischemia or infarction, lifestyle, upregulators, rheumatic heart disease, or embolism. Pause the slide now and remember the mnemonic for precipitants of heart failure. Past medical history. It's important to elicit the etiology of the heart failure as systolic versus diastolic, left-sided versus right-sided, and to establish when the diagnosis was made. Is there a recent echo with ejection fraction? Any recent hospitalizations or investigations? Is your patient being followed by a cardiologist? Does your patient have any other known cardiac disease or any risk factors for a congestive heart failure? Medications. Is your patient compliant with their home medications? Has there been any changes to the home medications? Is your patient taking furosemide at home and if so, at what dose? What other heart failure therapy is your patient taking, including beta blockers, ACE inhibitors and ARBs, aldosterone antagonists, digoxin, nitrates, statin, or aspirin? Is your patient taking any medications which could exacerbate their heart failure? Physical examination is very important in patients with congestive heart failure. On cardiac examination, it is important to elicit the height of the jugular venous pressure as well as any additional murmurs or heart sounds. On respiratory examination, it is important to elicit any accessory muscle use, crackles, wheezes, or decreased air entry. Abdominal examination, looking for distension or ascites. And on peripheral examination, to assess the amount of peripheral edema. Investigations include routine CBC, electrolytes, renal profile, TSH, and serial cardiac enzymes. A urinalysis to rule out urinary tract infection. An ECG. An ECG gives you a wealth of information about your patient. This includes any arrhythmias, bundle branch blocks, ST segment elevation or depression, new or old Q waves in indicating prior infarction, right heart strain. It is very important to compare the current ECG to a previous one if possible. On chest x-ray, there are several different aspects which will point to congestive heart failure. Those include cardiomegaly, pulmonary vascular redistribution or fat swings, curly V lines, a marker of interstitial edema, and par parabronchial cuffing, as well as a right-sided pleural effusion. JAMA Rational Clinical Examination Does this patient with dyspnea have congestive heart failure? The highest likelihood ratios include history of heart failure, a third heart sound, elevated jugular venous pressure, chest x-ray findings consistent with congestive heart failure, and atrial fibrillation. Management, L-M-N-O-P. First assess the ABCs, Lasix, two times a home dose in IV, morphine or hydromorphone as tolerated, nitroglycerin, oxygen, position, keep your patient upright, and if needed, positive pressure airway support such as CPAP or BiPAP. Admission orders, 
Use the CHF care pathway if available at your hospital. And remember to order daily blood work, daily weights, and reassess IV Lasix dosage daily according to volume status and creatinine. When to call your SMR. Call your SMR if the blood pressure is under 100, systolic or greater than 160, if your patient is requiring increased amounts of oxygen despite therapy, as well as increased confusion and an arrhythmia. In summary, acute decompensated heart failure, the diagnosis is based upon history, clinical examination, and chest x-ray. Investigation should assess precipitating factors or secondary causes. The goal of acute management is to relieve respiratory distress through diuresis or non-invasive positive pressure ventilation.